Hi, and welcome to the next episode of Columbus Regional Healthcare System Health Talk. My name is Stephanie Miller. I'm the Physician and Community Outreach Services Coordinator for Columbus Regional Healthcare System. November is National Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And being that lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in both men and women in the United States, we felt that this was a very important subject for us to discuss. And with me today, I have Ashley Wilson, she is the manager hey of our imaging department. Hi, Ash. Hey. And Jonathan Souls, nurse practitioner at Denary Cancer Care Center. Thank you both for being with me today. Hello. So we're going to jump right into it. And um, Jonathan, tell us about some of the risk factors for lung cancer. Um, the risk factors are pretty simple. They're what you think of uh, when it comes to lung cancers. Most people, the first thing they brings to their mind is uh, smoking and that comes along with tobacco use of any kind, whether it be um, smoking from direct cigarettes, cigars. Um, but the risk factors entail things such as that, and you're 15 to 30 times more likely to develop a lung cancer or a lung difficulty if you are an active smoker um, versus people that do not smoke. So as of right now, you know, on our data showing that smoking is one of the largest risk factors involved in tobacco use. Okay, thank you. Now, someone who does smoke might have the question, if I stop smoking today, does that decrease my chances? What? It does, it, it does and, you know, that's actually one of the eligibility criteria for a low, a low dose CT scan is if you have stopped smoking within the last 15 years. Um, but decreasing your smoking are actually abstaining from smoking does dramatically decrease your effects or the possibilities of having any lung-related cancers or any diseases of the um, pulmonary system as well. So no one needs to think they're too far gone and quitting smoking any time is good. Yeah, okay. never too far gone. We tell our patients here the same thing, you know, no matter what the age, there's always benefits and positive effects from abstaining from smoking or using tobacco. Okay. Um, so what are some of the symptoms of lung cancer? If someone has been a smoker or even not a smoker, what, what do you tend to see as symptoms? Right. Uh, most of the time our patients come in, you know, they say they feel like something's just not right. They don't feel well. Could be malaise, could be fatigue. Um, coughing that gets worse that doesn't go away, a non-productive cough or a productive cough as well, but usually a non-productive cough, um, weight loss for an unknown reason, feeling tired and fatigued, coughing up blood, which is a, a major sign, um, wheezing, shortness of breath, your everyday things. You know, if you, if you find that you're having difficulties with your acti activities of daily living, you know, walking to the mailbox is becoming increasingly harder. Uh, to catch your breath if it takes you longer periods of time to catch your breath. Um, chest pains that are new onset that aren't that tend to get worse versus getting better with a period of time, those are um, signs and symptoms that you you need to go to your health care provider and maybe be screened for a possibility of these uh, low-dose CT scans. Okay, so thank you for that. And you have mentioned low-dose CT scans twice now. So let's talk a little bit about that because many people don't realize that we have that here at the hospital for basically anybody who fits the criteria, and that is right. a scan to check for early stages of lung cancer. Right, Ashley? That is correct. So what we do is we do a CT scan. It is a lower amount of radiation than your tip typical CT scan, and it is detecting for cancer within your lungs. Um, it is actually suggested for anyone between the ages of 55 and 80 who have a 30-pack year history of smoking, currently smoke, or have quit within the last 15 years. And with that 30-pack year, that is one pack a day for 30 years. Um, a lot of insurances will cover this CT screening. 
If by chance they do not cover it, we have reduced the call so that it is an awesome opportunity for you to still get screened if you think you may have that chance of having lung cancer or developing lung cancer. Um, it is also recommended if you have lung cancer in a first degree relative, like your brother, your sister, your mother, or your father. So if by chance your insurance does not cover this screening for you to come have an exam, we have reduced the cost that it will only cost you $150, which is not a lot at all when you think about a CT scan. So that would be $100 at the day upon having the actual scan performed, and then you'll get a bill from the radiologist group who provide the dictation for the $50. So it's still only $100, I'm sorry, it's still only $150 total if the insurance does not cover it. That's not bad at all. So no, it's not. not. It's definitely worth the benefit. So if someone is a smoker and they don't smoke a pack a day, and maybe they smoke a pack every two days, can they pay that $150 and get the scan? Absolutely. Um, that okay. eligibility criteria is based off of the insurance carriers. So even if you do not meet that criteria, you can come in as a self-pay patient and still pay only the total of $150 to have that scan performed. So anybody who feels they, they need to come get scanned can get scanned for $150. Yes, ma'am. The only thing they'll have to do is speak with their primary care provider and they will have to obtain an order from the physician and then they can call and schedule it if you want to be put on the schedule or you can walk into the imaging department and have it performed. Okay, so you don't necessarily have to call and make an appointment. You just need the order from your primary care provider and you can come to the imaging department here at Columbus Regional. That is correct. We can do it as a walk in procedure. You might have to wait mm -hmm. a little bit because we do have scheduled slots. So if right. you want to be more on a timely timeline, I would suggest getting scheduled, but you can definitely walk in and get it performed. OK. Well, that's great to know. Um, is there anything else you want to say about the screening or anything you, Jonathan, would like to add to this? Yeah, I was going to mention a few more of the risk factors of those who may be exposed to different things other than smoking. Because, okay, you know, a lot of a lot of our patients, for unknown reasons, they they have some of the signs and symptoms, and they'll come in, and you know, they may or may not be an active smoker or a smoker in the past. You know, um, one of the biggest things I've seen in researching a lot of this pulmonary issues is the exposure to radon. And, you know, going into it, I didn't know a lot about radon. I knew what it was, but I didn't realize how common the exposure was. Um, it's a gas that's emitted by, it, by dirt and rock that can actually trap itself in the foundation of your home or in the crawl space. And it's, you know, a lot of people can relate to carbon monoxide. It's kind of on the same principle, but, you know, radon can not be smelled. It cannot be detected other than with radon detectors. So, um, you know, it's tasteless, it's smell, it has no smell, and I would really encourage people to, if they live in an area that has rocky soil or have any questions of uh, radon in the area, I would probably, you know, have my house tested for exposure because that's one of the second leading causes of uh, lung disorders as far as that goes. And in our area, you know, construction's high, a lot of construction jobs in this region, and as best as it's for pulmonary issues as well, and those come in older materials such as your tiles, your ceiling tiles, your um, building tiles, and other building materials that are in the older buildings as far as demolition and new construction as well. So those are things to be looking for as far as risk factors as well. I'd like to add on all the risk factors as well, since Jonathan is talking about some of the symptoms. Um, with this screening being a lower radiation exam, um, if you currently have any symptoms of lung cancer, such as shortness of breath, coughing up blood, or if you have previously been diagnosed with lung cancer, then you'll need a more um, detailed exam versus this actual screening so that you would not be a candidate to come in and have this screening performed for $150. Another right. thing would be if you've had a chest CT in the past 18 months, because that is going to be a more detailed exam versus just the screening. So I just want to make sure everybody is aware of that. But, you know, it is a screening that is offered. But you ha if you have any of those criteria that I just listed, you know, the screening would not be ideal for you. It would be a different exam. Ashley, if anyone has any more questions, like 
to reach out to you or someone in your department to ask about the screenings? What number do they call? Um, if anybody's more than welcome to contact me, my number is 642-1764. Or if they would like to call and speak directly to one of the CT technologists who are the ones that would perform the actual exam, that number is 642-8011, extension 2272. But if anybody just calls the imaging department, anybody will be more than welcoming to any of the questions that they may ask. Thank you. And You're real welcome. quick, before we close, I want you to tell about the first patient that we had who got yes, absolutely. the screening. So we have been performing the lung cancer CT screenings for a couple of years now, and our very first patient, um, she came in, the first exam that we had done since we implemented this new screening exam, and she actually was diagnosed with a nodule and having some lung cancer. So once she got diagnosed, um, that we have two nurses here in the department. They follow up with the patient. We make sure that the primary care provider that orders the exam gets the report. Um, and we go over that report with that office to make sure, hey, make sure you follow up with this patient if by chance it is a positive diagnosis. Um, and this patient was indeed positive. So she followed up and she went through all of the proper routes. She had surgery and all of that lung cancer was removed. That was a very um, well spent $150. Very well spent $150. Yes. It is All a right. definite, it is definitely worth paying that money to have the screen and performed if you think you would be a candidate. Very good. All right. So if you have any questions, please call us at Columbus Regional. We're happy to answer your questions for you. And please, we, we are COVID safe. Do not be scared to come take care of your health. Make sure you get your annual screenings, your colonoscopies, your mammograms. It's so important. This pandemic has not stopped your health. So please take care of yourself and call us if we can be of help. Thank you, Ashley, and thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, you too.